police emergency. We've got someone up the uh, the river making loud groaning noises. We're just a bit concerned because they're not in a in a good place. Can you see if it's a male or a female? Uh, it's a male for sure. Has he gone under a bridge yet at all, or under under the railway line? Seems like it. Yeah, I. I it seems He's like going around that bend under the railway line. I, I think so, but I can't see probably, mate. Um, right, okay, I'm going to pass it across, see if we can get somewhere down there right now. It was just a really normal day. Um, I was out with my friends, and it was autumn. It was cold, but there was no sense of danger at all. survivability uh, and likelihood of survivability of a lone individual being um, on the riverbank and entering the water in November at 3am is very, very slim. I've been a police officer for 14 years and I've dealt with tens of incidents where people have gone into the water. In every one of those instances the persons have died. Any person entering the water at that time of year is at risk of hypothermia within minutes of entering. I'd started at nine o'clock in the evening, uh, normal night shift, so we'd already been to a few incidents in that night, and we were back at the police station completing some paperwork. My pager went off, uh, which woke me up at three o'clock in the morning. Up, get dressed, into the car, drive to the fire station. Where we were, ran alongside the river, I hopped over the wall and was suddenly in blackness. Took a few steps uh, to find somewhere. I thought it'd be okay to take a wee and just took one, one more step and felt my, my foot was in the water. Damn, um, my foot's wet. Sort of as I was thinking that, I realized I could feel water at my thighs and thought, oh no, and then I started trying to work my way out. I just realized I was in up to my neck and I'm in a really bad situation now. Um, my face was covered, I was in the water fully. I had no idea where the side of the river was and all I could feel was the tide pulling me out. That's the last memory I have is just thinking, I don't know where the river bank is. Notoriously for these type of events, you'd receive numerous calls and updates of where the individual are. This was a single call to a person entering the water and no more information. First question is, can we just confirm where our 999 caller last saw our casualty? What's the temperature like? How deep's the water? Which way's the water flowing? We had to start our search in a, a really remote, inaccessible location. So we had one access point to the north and we had one access point to the river to the south and it covered a three mile stretch. We had crews on either bank, if you like, a pincer movement. We took the fire appliance, set up, and then we, we walked north, following the river all the way along to see if we can locate the casualty. The river could clearly be seen to be flowing very quickly. Um, we were imagining that this person potentially could be swept out towards the sea over a three mile stretch, could be anywhere along the river bank, and could be potentially still in the middle of the water. We're sweeping the river banks, both sides, and looking in eddies and other streams that are coming in and out of the river, and just searching all the banks as we went. The window of opportunity for this individual hasn't gained anything from it for being so cold. This was time critical, and therefore we need support from the local police helicopter. Its initial searches were unsuccessful. As the incident evolved and time was ticking on, uh, there were several considerations going on. We were wondering whether this person was still in the river, whether they made their way out, but primarily we weren't going to give up. In that case, uh, we think he found, we found uh, your male. He's uh, south of the main bridge. Uh, there were two officers, possibly fire officers, walking on the eastern side of the river. He's actually on the western side. 
And my immediate thought was to try and get to that location as quick as possible. So we increased our pace, we run basically as fast as we could. I ran along the riverbank uh, for about a mile and a half. I saw a male lying on the edge of the riverbank. Uh, I didn't know whether he was dead or he was alive and uh, I was frightened. I was concerned for his welfare. And the best way to treat them is to get the, the body warmed as quickly as we possibly can and skin to skin is the best way forward to do that and give them the best chance of survival. John jumped straight in there, did body to body contact that's life saving skills went to effectively save Daniel's life. We started to talk to each other uh, trying to work out what the next best plan was to try and get Daniel to an ambulance. Options considered ranging from using the Coast Guard helicopter, the police helicopter, whether we could get land vehicles closer to where we were, uh, and unfortunately all of those options played out and they were unsuitable. We needed to get him out. There was a lot of discussion what was the best way, but for us on the ground with him, it was right, we've got to carry him effectively back up to the river to where everything was. Where they found me was a mile and a half from the nearest road access and they had to get me out of there quick and they had to do a stretcher carry, they had to physically carry me. Having looked up and down the riverbank for um, a significant period of time, it was pretty amazing. Carrying the boat over undulating ground, over stiles, through gates, and it yeah, it was just sort of grit your teeth and let's get on with it. We had a lot of people there waiting for us, and indeed there was other crews coming down towards us to meet us and assist us. The closer we got to the road, where I knew there was more colleagues, where there was an ambulance, a huge sense of relief came over me. Daniel started to regain some consciousness, was able to tell us his name. I was no longer fearful for his life but I felt that there was going to be some hope. I was in the mid-twenties, so body temperature, when I got to the ambulance, so I would have been very hypothermic. One of the guys said, you, you, we think you were in there for an hour and a half, um, and then suddenly it comes crashing down that um, this was a really, really serious thing, and I probably should have been dead. As a team that evening, we were so pleased that of the successful outcome because an incident like this doesn't normally result in a successful rescue. This incident obviously started with Daniel taking one step too many and entering the water. Now it's early hours of the morning, it's freezing cold and it's a tidal river. Daniel was swept some considerable distance from where he entered the water. So I consider him incredibly lucky to survive that incident. And I think this multi-agency response was a significant effort to find him and bring him back to a place where he can be treated. Working closely with other emergency services like the fire service and the ambulance service is what we do to try and keep people safe in our communities. For me to hear that they had a 999 call of someone who had heard something on a dark night at three o'clock in the morning and to then hear details of the effort the team went into to search up and down the river using so much energy and effort just really touched me. It's not just skill, it's they work with their hearts as well. They really went out of their way. Just a strip of a, a little bit of heat and that was Daniel. The issue of drowning is massively under-recognised within the UK. It happens quickly and without warning. So if it happens to you, shout. Make yourself heard. Also, try not to panic. Just think, float to live. Someone on the edge of town saw me and fortunately phoned 999. Uh, and if they hadn't made that call, there's absolutely no way I'd be alive today. If you see somebody going to the water, don't go in after them. Call 999.